Hello, welcome to the third and final session of The Lab, Making Sense of Immersion in 2021. This series of online meetups gathers key, gathers key professionals from the mixed reality and museum industries for game-changing conversations. For today's third episode, Immersion for Cultural Institutions, we will focus on the big question, which technology for which need? Hi, I'm Dara Danderan. It is so exciting to be here hosting this on behalf of several amazing institutions across different continents that are wanting to have these hard and really interesting conversations about how we move the future forward. I'm a creative director, a curator, and a journalist, mostly working with immersive and emerging technology and new media to try to bring audiences closer to what the future will look, feel, sound, and be like all that to say, I've worked with different companies like Vice, Refinery29, Wallplay, Sensorium Studios, Superbright, and several others to push this forward. I'm a fierce advocate for bringing more people into the industry so that they can play and learn and have a wonderful time really being part of the future. For museums, for studios, for different institutions, creators, technologists, this is important that we have these conversations because this technology is not always incredibly accessible. So we're really happy that you're here to join us today. We hope you'll benefit from these conversations. A little bit about the background and the organizers now. This program has been initiated by We Are Museums, an online community of museum change makers leading museums through change and museum connections, an international trade fair focusing on the business and sustainable challenges of museums, cultural and touristic venues. Museum Connections highlights trends and innovations to imagine the new visitor's experience. And the next event will take place in May in Paris, France. For the lab series, they connected with key actors from across the fields and oceans to join forces. These include the cultural services of the French Embassy. As part of the program French Immersion, the French Embassy has launched a new study on how to fund and distribute immersive experiences. The study is conducted by the U.S. crowdfunding platform, the Kaleidoscope Fund, that has built a global network of more than 20,000 top VR creators and industry leaders. The Pixie Festival, a French festival that features an exhibition of the most innovative stories and digital installations, and Fabula, cultural practice and observatory dedicated to the idea of worlding with digital media. This includes virtual reality, open worlds, and online streams. This program has the ambition to create a safe space for dialogue for the key actors of the VR and immersive industry, working with cultural institutions to unpack and unlock the main challenges still existing. Three 30-minute online sessions, this one being the last, will welcome experts from France, from Europe, and the U.S., and beyond to share their experience and analysis of immersive projects and the work that they're doing to forward them. This cycle of ongoing discussions will inspire a roundtable to be organized at Museum Connections 2021 in Paris. For a recap of our first and second session, the first we talked about how to foster collaborations between immersive creatives and cultural spaces. Uh, we spoke with a few different I'm saying this because it would be wonderful if you could go and check out the past links. We have them recorded on YouTube. So I won't go into too much detail because I want to get into these next participants. But I will say the second episode, which just finished up last week, was about immersive or immersion for cultural institutions as well. Um, you can check out, I believe that they are linked at uh, We Are Museums as well on their YouTube page. Um, all that to say, I want to jump into our first speaker of today. Cami Lopato. She's the co-founder of Diversion Cinema. Pardon for the ambulance. I'm in New York. Hi from around the world. So if you hear any sirens, that's just in my background. Our first speaker is Cami Lopato. She's the co-founder of Diversion Cinema, a virtual reality spaces creator and immersive experiences distributor. Cami has worked for eight years in the French film industry. Her VR adventure started in 2015 with the opening of the first VR cinema in France and continues on with the creation of Diversion Cinema in 2016. That creates and operates virtual reality showcases and, and spaces for companies and different festivals. In 2018, it launched a distribution division and acts as an international sales agent with the aim of bringing the best XR experiences to audiences worldwide. In 2019, Cami began leading the distribution college for AFXR, the French Association for XR, and teaches at Le Mans de Paris as well as Les Sorbonnes. 
Without further ado, I pass it on to Cami. Thank you. Hi, thank you very much. Um, yes, uh, I will share my screen in order to give my um, presentation. Uh, let me make sure that it's working. I think it's working, yes. Um, so the question was, immersion for cultural institution, which technology for which needs? Well, uh, for diversion cinema, we had, uh, I kind of focused in three different technologies. Uh, the first one would be uh, the 360 films um, that we showcase in what we call the VR cinema. Uh, we did it for multiple, um, multiple uh, cultural venues, but I wanted to focus on one particularly, which is an aquarium in uh, the west of France called Oceanopolis. But as you can see, we also, um, we also put together a VR cinema for, let's say, more prestigious um, uh, venues as Le Panthéon, uh, part of um, the movie that we show is called Séance 1 to 9, which was produced for the exhibition. And the picture that you see here is from uh, Le Musée d'Orsay, where we put together a VR cinema for uh, the French-German broadcaster called Arte. Uh, let's go back to uh, Oceanopolis. I wanted to show you um, a little, a little, a very short video about this event. It's a one minute video. Let's do it. I showed this video because I find it very cute. Um, and also because sometimes people, when we talk about a VR cinema and an ATC VR cinema, people don't realize how it looks like. Uh, so this is how it, it looks like. And this is also how people react after seeing um, the two movies that we, uh, we offer them, uh, let's say, for this uh, screening. So this event was uh, back in uh, 2018. It was a 42 days event, uh, AC cinema, um, VR cinema uh, seats. Uh, we did seven screenings a day, uh, which roughly uh, made us welcoming 24,000 uh, people. Uh, it was super interesting for us because it was the biggest VR cinema we, we put together. Uh, but also um, very nice, as you can uh, imagine, to welcome those people and to have them clap at the end of the screening. That was uh, very interesting. Also, what was very interesting is um, the needs of the Oceanopolis, because why did they need it to have this? Why did they choose to have this event? First of all, because uh, it's an aquarium. High season for them is summer. And so each summer they need to uh, market themselves. Uh, in order to communicate, like, to have novelty to offer to the, to the audience. Uh, so each summer they have a new event, and this summer it was a VR cinema, among other things, by the way. Um, so it was very good. To, uh, they decided to have this VR cinema and to pay for this VR cinema because they needed to market themselves. Uh, for us, it was um, to market themselves prior to the event, through communication, and during the event, as they ask us to ask people, uh, to encourage people to actually put um, comments on TripAdvisor. And this summer, the TripAdvisor of Oceanopolis uh, went up in terms of stars um, because people were just enthusiastic and wanted to share their enthusiasm. Um, it was also a good way for us to put uh, creative work um, forward. 
and of course to monetize for ourselves but also for the uh, producers and to uh, make VR known by an audience that is not uh, attracted to VR natively, let's say. Um, but one thing that I want to, 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 to be a bit precise about is that people uh, the audience in, the, in this VR cinema didn't need to pay for it specifically. They would, uh, they would uh, pay uh, the, the entry ticket uh, and then they would be able to choose uh, one of the, uh, those events that the Oceanopolis had uh, this summer. Uh, we were sold out uh, during the whole uh, 42 days. Uh, and again, the enthusiasm was uh, very nice to um, witness. Uh, so that was VR cinema uh, for 360 videos. We also, uh, but I will go very uh, quickly on that, we also uh, de developed a station called Victor Romeo that is for uh, 360 films as well. Uh, but doesn't need uh, to be um, to have a, a dedicated VR operator. The aim of this station is to be deployed in a venue and that the venue will take care of it um, by itself. Uh, very proud to be partner of uh, La Villette and Arte uh, with Victor Romeo that we deployed in a project called Microfolie, uh, which is basically um, a digital museum that is deployed in difficult, uh, I, uh, like in places where it's not much cultural things happening, let's say. Um, and uh, as of today, we deployed 20 stations in those uh, microphones. Um, I wanted, so that was for the 360 films. Um, now let's go to interactive VR. Uh, by interactive VR, I mean, uh, it's not very clear, but I mean VR, um, the VR mask that needs um, a computer to uh, work. Uh, we did a few things with that as well in cultural places. I wanted to focus on um, one in particular, which is Ayahuasca, the shamanic exhibition. Regarding interactive VR, we mostly do events, but we also um, equip uh, a few uh, places, and one of them is the picture that you uh, see here, which is called Galerie Cinema and is in, uh, in Paris. Um, let's go back to Ayahuasca, the shamanic exhibition. Um, we were the very happy distributors, sales agents of a piece called Ayahuasca, the um, uh, Cosmic Journey, which is directed by uh, Jan Kunen and produced by Atlas V. The first time we saw Ayahuasca uh, Cosmic Journey, we were absolutely uh, en enthusiastic about it. And uh, just after seeing it for the first time, we actually had a discussion, like an hour discussion with uh, Jan Kunen. Uh, and it was a very super interesting and it kind of make us see the VR experience with different eyes after this conversation with Jan. Uh, that's why we thought it was super interesting. It was needed actually to add a little bit of context around uh, the VR piece. And uh, that was the first reason. And the second reason is because we wanted to um, try a, a different kind of distribution model. And we had the feeling that by creating an exhibition and calling it exhibition, we would be more understandable uh, for cultural venues. So this is what we did. We actually gathered uh, elements uh, for the exhibition coming from uh, Jan Kunen itself through its different um, uh, art um, ways of talking about uh, his ayahuasca experience. Uh, we also uh, put together um, extracts of a documentary. We recorded a shaman chants that people would uh, be able to listen to. Um, in order to understand what uh, a shaman chant is about. Uh, and of course, uh, the, VR, uh, the VR places, place, let's say, where people would experience VR per, the, the, the VR per se, uh, which was uh, a little bit, um, with a little bit of set design as well. Uh, this exhibition was shown for the first time in the Ice Team Museum in Amsterdam. Uh, in November uh, last year, exactly a year ago. 
Uh, the exhibition took uh, place for uh, 11 days. Uh, we had five seats and we roughly welcomed uh, 600 uh, people in the exhibition. Uh, the fun fact is that uh, for us, it was the first time, of course, that we created an exhibition. So we were not very sure what we were doing. Actually, we did a few mistakes, uh, many mistakes. Um, but at the end, it all uh, uh, went well uh, because the exhibition was sold out two days before it even started. Uh, so we were very happy with that and also a bit anxious. Um, for IFC Museum, the idea was to uh, see if this exhibition would attract a new audience. It was a way to monetize uh, their venue as well. And for us, as I said, it was, it was, to, uh, it was part of our R&D uh, for distribution and to try different models. So that was uh, Ayahuasca using uh, interactive VR. The last one uh, would be the Quest technology. Um, Quest is, well, you know the Quest, the Oculus Quest. Uh, we have one, um, one uh, piece which is called Pitch Garden, which is kind of a walking, a rooming experience that we deployed uh, a few times in, a few times, two times in Spain in September, but in Paris, we uh, showcased it in Le 104, which is a cultural venue. Uh, unfortunately, this showcasing started uh, beginning of uh, November, uh, and we had, we, it was planned for 13 days, but we had to interrupt it after three days because of uh, a new lockdown here. So we don't know exactly what would be the outcome of it. Uh, we hope that we will be able to, um, to reschedule uh, it uh, at the end of the year or beginning of next year. Um, but uh, why Le 104 would, um, would be willing to do it? Uh, first of all, because uh, it's a new art form. And one of the mission of Le 104 is to actually uh, be a place of culture and innovation. Uh, so they had the, 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 the need to understand what is uh, immersion about and how do they, uh, what is their place in it. Um, also monetization and training as they know that uh, immersive is coming to them uh, and coming to everywhere. Uh, they need to actually make sure that they know what they are talking about and that they are able to welcome this kind of artwork. So I would conclude very quickly. Uh, to say that um, it's really, um, I mean, uh, what which technology is really about what drives your decision making? What is it, what is important for you? Is it the artwork? Uh, if it the piece in itself, most of the time they do bring their technology with them, and you you can't really uh, choose which technology to use. Is it do you want to use VR for a marketing tool uh, to attract new audiences? If yes, what are those? Uh, audiences, and then you will also uh, can you make your decision um, uh, in regards of the new audience that you want to attract, or is it to reward your existing audience? Again, what is it? Um, is the number of people that you will be able, able to welcome a key uh, a key thing? Is it prestige? What do you what space do you have, and do you have technical people that will be able to uh, make it work? So all those questions you have to ask yourself and that will uh, dr drive you to, um, to which technology to use. But one thing I want to just add uh, is don't estimate the human side of tech. Uh, VR works better if you have people taking care of it and people making the, uh, the connection with the audience. And also um, a key thing for VR to make sure it works and that it's not a nightmare is to, stray, to test train, to rehearse, and to adjust. And that's it. Um, Kami, thank you so much, uh, especially that last point about the human side of technology. I think about that all the time and how important it is that we really work alongside each other and work with the technology, not against it, because that can so easily affect how we, we move through developing content or how we promote it, and also designing different types of technologies for everyone or certain bodies or, you know, et cetera. A more inclusive approach is always beneficial. But thank you very much for your points. 
And now I'm happy to transition the talk to our next and final speaker, Sandro Caracelli Zay. I hope I got that right. He's the founder and chief Hi. creative officer of Art Tech House, an innovative digital art space dedicated to 21st century artists, artists and audiences. Art Tech House is the first of its kind, a 21st century innovative digital art space dedicated to experiential and technology-driven artworks by artists who are forerunners at the new age of arts and tech and the future of both. At these crossroads of art, science, and technology, Art Tech House changes the world of art as we know it. Since its opening in June 2017 in Washington, D.C., Art Tech House has welcomed over 1.1 million visitors and has captivated a global audience, making headlines in the New York Times, the BBC, USA Today, National Geographic, CNN, the Washington Post, and other publications. Uh, all that to say, jumping, jumping ahead to introduce him, uh, he now has three different Art Tech House galleries, um, not only the one in DC, but Miami, as well as in New York. Uh, it seems probably like there's more coming in the future, but I hand it off to for you. Sure. Thank you. For sure, more coming for the future, definitely. And <laughs> it's good to be here. And thank you so much for the invite. Um, I want to do a little bit of a presentation as well. I hope everyone is staying safe and um, thank you for joining us today. So at Art Tech House, we really, um, our mission is to pioneer these type of um, experiences with the technology. Um, hope you guys of art space dedicated to showcasing artists who use technology to create. Our story began in Washington, D.C., where we opened our first permanent location in the summer of 2017, inviting the public into a one-of-a-kind art space where art, science, and technology come together. In 2018, we created a home for digital art in the heart of Miami Beach. And in 2019, we brought the first digital art space to New York City's Chelsea Market, transforming a 100-year-old boiler room into a destination for 21st century art. At Art Tech House, one can always be inspired, educated, and empowered through exploration of groundbreaking creations and the best new ideas in this medium of art. We're proud to work with some of the most innovative digital artists in the world who are expanding the possibilities of art and how we experience it. Thank you for joining us at the intersection of art, science, and technology. So thank you guys. I hope you guys, we had some issue with the sound. So I hope you guys, everyone heard where it was. <laughs> with the, dealing with the technology, you know, I think one thing for sure is the troubleshooting. You gotta have a lot of patience and a lot of uh, expertise on that. Uh, otherwise, I think it's a, uh, it's a wonderful tool to, for 21st century creatives definitely to um, think outside of box and really, I think, uh, we are, you know, I believe living in a really wonderful time where all the art forms that we have known can come together and use the, uh, with the help of technology, um, create absolutely new experiences and for definitely for 21st century public. Um, so uh, for our first location, we opened up um, in Washington, D.C. I, I am from Washington, D.C. I've been there since 94 and uh, it was kind of serendipity. Uh, ways I found the first location. Uh, it was uh, meant for a uh, theater, but uh, never been occupied. So it was built actually the same year um, that I arrived to DC and never been occupied, been sitting there. And we are lucky to discover uh, underneath the office building and turn into a 21st century destination. Um, using a lot of projection, of course. Uh, we use a lot of different um, tools. We use, the, of course, the light source. Uh, we also have our augmented reality app um, that we actually um, produced it and you know, uh, created in-house. So we have a wonderful team of technologists that we able to um,
So can you hear me guys? I'm sorry. I'm, yeah. Um, our goal is to really inspire a new, new generation of artists and really create a platform for them to be able to uh, engage to the public, um, to be discovered. Because I, you know, I, I, I personally coming from the family of artists and traditional art form, I, my I'm third generation of the movie directors and uh, my mom was artist. Everyone in my family was artist. I wish I wish I had uh, I wish I had um, doctors or lawyers, but I, I, all I all I all I have is artists. So for me, it was always what's next in the arts. What is it that you know 20, 21st century will be remembered for? And what struck me is that uh, there was really a lack of the art spaces that uh, actually presented and showcases this, showcasing these type of artworks um, to the public. So that's that's how I got inspired to really uh, create a place for where audience of the today can engage to the uh, latest innovation in arts. I, I think you know we, as we know, we always calling this uh, medium of art as a, a new medium. Uh, I I think I'm aiming to change that because I think new medium is definitely uh, it's. It's, it's not a new medium anymore. I think it's an innovative medium that it's really engages to all senses and, and it's, it's, it's changing as we know it with the technology and you know, with the, with the create, creative approach. Um, we, we try to educate public through our exhibition programming to really uh, start developing a taste in public to really understand um, what they like and what they don't. It's, it's, I try to go again back to the traditional art where now today we have um, different genres like in the movies or in, a, in, in a art, in the fine arts or any, any type of music. Uh, we, we have genres that we can identify the things that we like. In this medium, it's, 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 a, it's a beginning. I think we are the, right at the beginning of something, something new where audience gonna be start developing a taste and start developing understanding of what type of uh, experience uh, through technology they, they enjoyed most. Same thing, like I said, in the music or in the a, in a film industry where, you know, right now, if, you, if you're in a mood to watch comedy, you, you, you turn to the comedy or if you wanna watch, watch some drama or you want to watch some action movie, you, you know, you, you can, you can tune into the right, uh, the, the right, uh, right uh, uh, experience, you know, uh, for your needs. So I think in, in this medium, we are, we are definitely uh, at the beginning of this type of um, engagement to the public. And, and for our, for us as Arctic House, we try to really educate public to with our programming to, for them to develop that taste and understanding of what they're experiencing. Uh, empowering artists is, I think it's most important because what I, what I learned from the, from the gecko when I opened up the, our doors that definitely there was so many artists out there that use technology to create, but there were really um, small amount of exhibitions or uh, things that can be traveled or can be showcased. So, so we stepped in and really um, created, actually since day one, we now created 20 new exhibitions uh, supporting uh, incredible artists uh, and uh, commissioning them to, to create. So, you know, we proud, proudly can say that, you know, uh, really uh, we, uh, we, we, we start that kind of like, ecosystem in a way, especially in the United States. I think the United States is definitely, I mean, I, I say in Europe, this medium was definitely way ahead of a time um, and more appreciated than in the United States. So we're really proud to be the first um, art space fully dedicated to this type of uh, art. So Art Tech House is not just a art space. It's we we have uh, we have um, studio. We have our own spaces. You know we do merchandise. We doing uh, incubating. We doing grants. 
uh, initiatives and many, many, many different things to support this uh, this whole movement in a way. Um, so it's going a little slow, <laughs> or maybe I'm not. I'm, I'm not woke up yet. I had the really, we had the uh, crazy deadlines. We had to work on um, working on a lot of great, great stuff, uh, even during the pandemic. And you know, it's it's a uh, it's 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 been busy for us. So sorry, a little bit. I haven't had a coffee yet. <laughs> so we're, we're proud to work with many incredible uh, pioneers in this medium, and really the 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 artists that. You know, experimenting and pushing the boundaries. Really, um, this is the future, and you know, it's uh, it's something that is uh, getting developed as we speak, and it's it's a, it's incredible to be a part of it. Uh, that's what some of the artists saying about us working, and you know, just a few few notes. Um, and in going to the technology, you know, we use, uh, for instance, in New York City, we, we, we pushed completely uh, all the limits with the pixels. Uh, I don't think even now, nobody knows how many, how many thousands of pixels we have in that space because we used um, 16 um, barcode projectors, which is uh, the top of the 30,000 aluminum projectors. And, um, the the space is pretty much you can't see any any pixels, so we're really proud of that. And um, even though I'm not I'm not the technical guy, so I don't usually uh, don't talk about this stuff. But uh, it's uh, yeah, it's definitely was something that we 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 pushed we pushed to the limits, and nothing like this exists in the world. We I know we we see some. Uh, exhibitions and we see them pro, pro, uh, projections, but uh, but the quality uh, for Arctic House is it's the is the is the goal. We always trying to make sure that our projection systems and everything that we use and we create it's the top of the line. Um, we also Andra? use. Yep. Yeah. Um, if if you could give your closing remarks, then I'm gonna have to close. Yeah, the yeah. Session. Sorry, sorry. I'm okay. Sorry. No, no, it's okay. Thank you. <laughs> But uh, yeah, no. Uh, just want to say it's the. I think the most part, most important part is the technology is there and everything is the, the tools that we have. It's 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 incredible. I think most important part is the human um, interaction with those technologies and really uh, the imagination to use them because I think it's it's just the incredible tools and you know it's all about how you wanted to use them as, as a humans. Thank you so much for closing on a very, very similar note to Kami, talking about the really significant part of this being the human-centered side. And sometimes we see him as technologists, as creatives, as people moving technology forward, pushing art to its limits, these institutions. I think we do forget that ultimately all of this comes from us and we're here to build it, to connect with one another, to build community, to have commentary. So I find it fascinating that here we're having a third and final conversation at the lab. And both of you ended doing such different work on the note of human connectivity and the impact of human innovation overall. I wanna thank Cami and Sandro and all of the wonderful institutions and people who are involved in this project. Again, this is the third and final episode of the lab. Thank you so much. You can see all the recorded episodes. This one included, it will be up momentarily on YouTube to reference or, or to rewatch. Um, this has been such an amazing opportunity to listen and, and to learn and to be part of a bigger conversation that's no doubt going to be around for a very long time. And fortunately, we all can be a part of it as we move into the future together. Thank you again. I'm Dara Dandaran and have a wonderful day. Stay safe.